this video is I want to we want to tell people about fishing at distance yeah. right now we've been here before guys we know that there's a, it basically if like I said before you look behind it steadily slopes off it's slightly deeper where we're fishing so I've chucked around with a bomb Rob ounce and a half bomb and I've counted it down to about five seconds so I'm saying we're looking at 15 foot at least okay. where we're fishing yeah. which is a lovely depth for catching a bit of everything roach skimmers perch you name it i also want to touch on the fact that the time of year that we're in we, if we had to come here two months ago we're fishing out there for an odd bream maybe a perch or two this time of year i've got a feeling we're going to be roach you know odd skimmer there's going to be other fish to catch so you guys at home think about what you're fishing when you're fishing at distance it's not it's not just about sitting up. I'm hoping I don't even have to put my rod in the rod rest today. I'm hoping I can be You're busy. You're almost going to be speed fishing at 70 metres. That's, That's exactly what, what I'm going to be doing. Right. And it's a brilliant way to train yourself for that distance, in my opinion. Mm. So I want to talk about how I'm going to start off the peg. And I almost want to bring the guys in on it, like, it live because I'm, I'm really confident we're going to get bites quickly. If we don't, then we'll settle in and, right, and so come back in. But I'm confident we're going to get some bites here. So I want to bring the guys straight in with how we're going about it. You know what? We've talked about how we like to feel our way into a session. Yes. If there's going to be, which I know the answer to this, is this going to be pile a load of bait in, sit and wait for half an hour, an hour, then chuck on top of it and hope there's a load of bream there? Definitely, definitely, definitely So we're not. just fishing? Yeah, we're fishing. And this is what we're going to do to start with, right? We are literally going to chuck out, right? And I'll take my hook length off just to um, do it sort of as if I was doing it as, as if it was a match, right? Now, in my belief, Rob, I like to chuck in once or twice, dead quickly, literally let it get down to the bottom, empty out and come back now notice i've gone for the hex mesh feeder right now this is because i don't want to go for that open cage straight away leave yourself somewhere to go yeah, course, leave yeah. yourself somewhere to go you don't want to be in a situation whereby you're like um i've played all my cards yeah, what yeah. I say, oh no i can't and the fish aren't here so yeah. i've got my ground bait mix and all i'm gonna do just to start off with I've chopped up some of the worms. I'm literally going to put, look, a next to no, next to nothing flick of worms in, right? I'm going to put a next to nothing, like five or six casters in. Look, honestly, nothing at all. I'm going to use the ground bait today as a lot of what I'm doing and a, and a piece of sweet corn, right? Like I said to yeah. the guys and I talked about the bait. And I'm going to load that feeder up by almost scooping the feeder through that right so it collects all those pieces of bait not going to nip it in too hard but i am going to go get to the bottom i don't okay. want it to it's going to come out on the way so down. you're you're paying quite close attention this is really important you know when we're loading feeders up yeah and we've had this before in lineups when we've been away on on an england duty everyone loads the feeder up slightly different it's hard to get across what you're doing so quite often we'll get behind someone and go shows how you've loaded your feeder up today yeah and you're leaving it quite clean on the outside you're trying to not have yes. anything come off it i'm cleaning it i'm pressing it in in my head 10 percent of that's coming out on the way down right that's what i'm looking to achieve and i i'm, I'm going to wet my braid up because um it's very hot today yeah, it could all flop and you, your braid could be a bit of a disaster so literally look at that i'm just going to run the water over my braid there make sure my braid's nice and damp i'm going to chuck this out twice rob all right so i'm literally going to chuck this out and i'm going to count it down the first time right hang on before we yeah. do this let's just Go quickly on. talk about casting as well can what, i this... can i check these two out and then i would like to focus on casting or do you want me to do it now i want you to do it now right come on then let's do it let's do it that's fine all right so so i've got about what are we saying there meter and a half meter and a bit yeah. of line down i always say roughly half the rod so look if i swung the feeder back in yeah it's almost halfway along the middle section of the rod that for me is the section that i'm looking at for the cast okay now i think there's two ways of generating a cast you need power but you need speed 
and I think your cast is a beautiful cast, for example, you generate the power through the speed of the tip, right? So effectively, you're, you're, you pass it from one point to the next very fast, and I think that's a brilliant way of casting. So that's what I'm gonna try and show today. So put my hand on the bottom of the bar. I come back very slowly, Lee. You it, know, I, I think that's really critical idea. I agree with you as well. So effectively, I like to almost get my line by swinging my feet slightly and bringing my rod back like this to the point where I'm ready to cast. Now, now what I don't do, Rob, is I don't stop at the bottom of the cast. And I'll tell you why that is. If I was a carp angler trying to whack a lead as far as I could, I would bring my rod back, keep my arms high, drop the lead and whack it really hard, right? That's not how I want to cast. I am going to be casting out every two, three, four minutes. I need a flow. Mm. I need like a rhythm with what I'm doing. I need my hook bait to be uh, clean every time. So effectively, what I do, look to do is I pick my spot on the far bank, everything's straight at it. I give the feeder a little swing, slowly bring it back. And when I feel the point at the back, that's when I whack it out towards the front. Look, hits the clip, no problem. That's 70 meters sticked up. I'm just gonna take a note of how long that's taken to get to the bottom. And so you're not really counting this down, you're just getting a no, feel for it. No, I'm just getting a feel yeah. for it. So, yeah, you know, it looks uh, six or seven seconds, and I'm just going to give it a good shake and then wind it back in. So, effectively, I'm just going to do that one more time because I believe that is obviously the first bit of bait that's gone into the peg. Obviously, you stood, you stood up then to cast. Is yes. that for a little bit more power, or is that because you're worried about catching anything behind? Do you know what? I, I do believe you can cast fast uh, sitting down. The only thing is, I always think a longer hook length got stuff behind me and more to the point Rob I can free my arms up to give me the leverage so I'm going to show the cast again I'm just going to get that little bit of bait flick that little bit of bait in each time and of course while I'm waiting for a bite I've already done this when I'm fishing or we'll talk about bait while we're fishing scoop that in there look here's the feeder again press it down just give it a hold look perfect feeder and I believe by standing up, it's freeing me up to do the, 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 the distance cast. It's freeing my arms up. Yeah, you're not up. hunched up, are you? You're not trying to do everything no. you know, with T-Rex arms. You're trying to be Correct. expansive with I'm your arms. I'm trying to put my arms high. So hopefully you can get this again. So out there, back to the point and whack towards the target. And effectively, I always think you're looking to release almost like at the 45 degree. I'm looking to release here. Okay. That's where the feeder needs to be coming out of my rods, almost 45 degrees to the, to the point. Just let that literally, that's either just hit the bottom or just before it hit the bottom, give it a shake and empty it out. Now, one, this is one thing I'm trying to be as accurate as I possibly can, Rob, and today it's relatively easy because of the lack of wind. But do you know what? And this is what I'm going to talk about now. I'm fishing in a style today that actually lends itself to a little bit of inaccuracy. Mm -hmm. Because I'm fishing 70 meters, I can't put it in that landing net head every time. I just can't do it. Do you know what I mean? I, I've been out and practiced a lot and I'm pretty accurate. And I'm saying you're in and around the gear. Right, that's roughly whereabouts okay. you are, generally speaking. Distance wise seems to be pretty good, but even if you think it's bang on, you're looking at a target, you're doing something in such a the distance. The size of a small car you're thinking, are you? Is that what you're thinking? Mm, well, I'd years? be delighted with the size of a small car. Let's say the size of a van, just because oh, I'm, I'm okay. not, you know, I'm a realist rather than a dreamer. But that's reflected in the way that I'm feeding the peg. So what I'm not gonna do is start concentrating a load of bait in one area. Today, I'm gonna try and fish an area. I'm not gonna put my little tiny feeder on, Right, I'm gonna try and build up constant flow through the peg of ground bait with odd bits of bait. Does that make sense? Yeah, I get so it. So rather than going, right, I'm just gonna fill my window feeder full of casters and plow it in every time. My thing with that is if I have a miscast that goes over there, I've got a pile of casters over there. I've got a pile of casters there. And bearing in mind, that's not that inaccurate, no. like three meters apart. Whereas if I'm almost creating this bed of ground bait this bed of bait it, it becomes an area doesn't it rather than little patches it becomes an area rather than little patches and that's exactly why i think that's so important